Hello fellow pot pushers, today I've got the best sci-fi I've read pretty much ever. The Aurora Cycle, the second book, Aurora Burning by Annie Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I hope I didn't butcher you guys' names. And well, let's get right into it. So, um, I, I recently found out that my job as a commentator is to kind of update you guys up to the point. For example, if you've read until book two, and you haven't read Aurora Rising, the series, the Aurora Cycle series in like three months, it's my job to update you guys on everything. And guess what? Apparently the books already do that because at the start of each book, there's a little little explanation of each character and the plot so far, and, I, and it's kind of stealing my job over here, man. Like, come on. But hey, I got my own take on things, so I hope you enjoy and hope you think I'm not useless. Let's get right into it. So. It kind of starts off, as usual, with an adrenaline and freaking filled fight sequence. We go, we have Tyler, as usual, running from a bunch of people trying to shoot and kill them. <laughs> Typical. And him going, hey, you want to know how this happened? Let's go to freaking two hours before. And we go two hours before, and we find out what happened. Apparently, they're trying to sell their longbow because they've been announced inter intergalactic freaking evildoers and criminals and... They're on a watch list, and they're on a criminal list, and their longbow from the Aurora Legion is very, 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 very recognizable. So, they get chased around. So, they're trying to sell the longbow because they need a new ship, and they're trying to sell it. And they're trying to sell it to some gangsters when, very unfortunate timing, a bunch of people just go, Hey, by the way, there's this massive bounty on each and every single one of them. And obviously, our protagonists need to run. So Tyler, the group's alpha, which is the leader of the Aurora Legion, if you don't understand anything I'm talking about, go back one video on this playlist to the Aurora Legion, Aurora, Aurora Rising Book 1, which is Aurora Rising. And they, they literally run away, and then they realize that the message where the ca Admiral, I believe, of the Aurora Legion freaking disowns them is actually a secret code. Um, thankfully, our brain Zila, who is a freaking like a mega genius, ultra big brain, two two thousand IQ woman, just casually decodes that and goes, "Hey, he's saying that we need to find this black box in this bank." So we do that, we do that, and we find out there's a ha secret hangar with this like two thousand level two thousand ultra tech ship that looks from the outside like a really bad ship, except on the inside it's like. A state-of-the-art longbow, and it's pretty awesome. And it's named after Zero or Cat, our who was our plane driver who died, unfortunately, at the end of the last book. And our characters kind of feel like, how the hell do they know Cat wouldn't be here? How is the how is the ship know? Even though it was like from before we were born, like how did exactly freaking met meeting our leads? So, anyways, we take this thing, we leave. And again, there's this mounting sense of mystery of who the hell is the captain of the Aurora Legion? How do they know the future? This was recorded 10 years ago. How do they know of all of these things and that we will be in this specific planet looking for a ride? And how is it so perfectly outfitted towards every single one of us? How did they know Cat or Zero was gonna freaking die? Well, none of those questions are really answered. Wait, meanwhile, um, we use the thing to go find a black box of Aurora's ship because we kind of realize that hey something must have happened to Aurora right because she was like a normal ass being and then she went on the Hatfield which is was the giant ship and then something happened to her so that she became the psychic master she is now so we want to find out what made what activated what triggered her so they go there unfortunately they get captured by sister by Kyle's sister because Kyle's sister is apparently a sociopathic maniac who is serving under the Star Slayer or the guy that, you know, destroyed the Cyril Drathi people's planet. And we go there and we get captured. We manage to escape, but Tyler gets captured by the bad guys, unfortunately. Meanwhile, Aurora and Kyle's relationship is a blooming. They're like, you know, really close. They're getting into that stage of the relationship where they're about to like, you know, have some spicy things going on at night if you know what I mean and they find the point where Aurora was activated which 
they find an object which they take in their ship and Aurora touches and it takes Aurora to the Echo, a remnant of all the Ishvaran, which is the ancient species that created all of us, who was trying to finish, who was trying to stop the Raham, or this these evil, like, I don't know how to describe it, these evil communist aliens that are trying to make everyone communist by um, spreading their pores inside of them. And a uh, final remnant of all of the Ishvaran last standing to go for the Raham trying to take over the universe. So. Uh, Aurora quickly gets out of the Echo for a second so she can prepare and she talks to everyone and she decides to take Cal with her and together they go in the Echo and Aurora trains for weeks except from the outside time it doesn't feel like weeks it feels like a couple hours and Aurora trains there for hours Cal also is with her supporting her mentally and physically and Aurora becomes more and more powerful and trying to bend reality Meanwhile, the Ishvaran is kind of sus, not gonna lie. They're like trying to make her freaking like forget everything, burn everything away. I got reference to our lovely title, which is Aurora Burning. And we, and Aurora trains everything again and again and again. And finally, she comes to a point where she has let go of everything in her past that is traumatizing her. Great character development, by the way, connected to her power development. And she's like super powerful, except the planet now wants her to let go of love, let go of Cal. And apparently she's gonna die if she uses the weapon, which is which sucks, which really really sucks. So uh, Aurora says, "No, screw you! I'll I'll do everything without whatever. I'll, I'll use my life. I don't care. I still will have love. You can't stop me from doing that." So they leave, freak the Ashveran, and they go ahead and go to find the weapon. They go to the planet where the weapon is supposed to be. The weapon is not there. What the hell? So. Now we have, meanwhile, back to, um, we got captured by Kyle's sister, but Tyler got captured by the bad guys. You see, the, you know how um, the intergalactic pretty much like police organization is being controlled by the Raham? Well, they want them to freaking kill each other. So what they did was they captured, you know, Kyle's sister and Tyler in their ship. Well, to, also to try to find where, well, Aurora is, but also because we can absolutely freaking like mess with them because now the Star Slayer is so mad at the Terran, which is like the people of Earth and the Batraskan, which is aliens, other alien species. They're super mad at them. So he's, he's threatening that he's going to blow up their son if his daughter is not released. His daughter? Oh my god. God, Cal's dad is the Star Slayer. He was hiding this from us this entire time, and we have a huge issue. So, because Cal broke everyone's trust, and Scarlet is pretty mad because, well, her dad, her dad, the legendary Captain Jericho Jones, literally died because of that fight. And Cal lied to them, lied to us, because he had told us that his dad had died. So this really isn't good. So we so Cal is freaking gone. His relationship goes kaboom. Cal sent away, and meanwhile, Cal sis and Tyler are kind of getting together. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I guess it's you know in a moment of crisis, love appears. I don't freaking know what's going on, and they're collaborating to try to escape. Meanwhile, there's a full out war between the Star Slayer and the Terrans. And we realize that the Star Slayer's weapon to slay stars is the Eshvaran super weapon meant for the Raham. So we realize, hey, okay, Star Slayer Carson, I don't know how to pronounce the name, is actually a trigger. Another one, which is another great plot point tied into the various foreshadowings. Hectic, what the hell is happening? We go to fight the Star Slayer. Aurora fights him. He says that the Eshvaran are selfish species trying to get revenge on a species that destroyed them, which is the Raham. Aurora is saying, hey, we still need to save the universe. They fight. Hectic, everything's going on. We're juggling six main characters. Stuff goes to crap. We have no idea what's happening. The freaking laser fires. We're all about to die. And then, boom, the book is over. Yes, that is how the book ends. <laughs> It was the most hectic end above all time, but I was still following. First off, okay, I want to talk about what I'm like really impressed with, and then literally nothing that I hate about this book. Okay, first off, they're juggling six main characters. Or, I mean, I guess technically you can say, oh, Aurora and Cal are technically the main characters. Side characters are all just 
side characters, but the development of the goddamn side characters are main character worthy of any YA novel these days. First of all, because YA novel these days don't do character development because a lot of authors kind of suck at writing. And um, we're juggling all six main characters in six different perspectives, six different storylines, six different character arcs. Perfectly, beautifully, it's executed so well I can't even say anything about it. A good example of this is uh, we, when, when we're looking at Zelo's perspective, the description in prose is very monotone, very scientific, very fitting of our brain or the scientist or the medical officer of our team, of our squad. We love when Tyler's description is very practical, it's very like on the scene, very charismatic. We love that. And we love that Scarlet, when we have Scarlet, Scarlet's always talking about how much like her breasts hurt or how much her bum hurts or it's very self-centered because Scarlet is a little bit narcissistic. Um, not the really, really bad kind of narcissistic, but she, she has a very strong sense of self-love. The prose, in other words, reflects the character or the perspective that we're looking at. Which is mind blowing. I mean, it's not mind blowing, but it's still awesome. It's executed extremely well, and also the general tone of the story, their sarcastic wit and humor at at the face of absolute danger is just heroic. It's cool. It's freaking ancient. Being witty and charismatic and funny in the face of death and danger and saving the universe. And, I mean, it's an idealized hero, man, and it's really, really cool. And of course, I've, I've kind of mentioned this, but the sense of mystery, the classic but hard-hitting twists with the dad, with the parents of Kyle being the star slayer, the epic, slitherally built villain, I don't know how to say that, and the pacing of the book, of how that mystery progresses, how the plot and the mystery, the character development all comes together in this complex web of a story that you can, that really keeps you on your toes and sweeps you away with its grandeur. It's the one of the best sci-fi stories I've ever read. And it's just awesome. Of course, I'm reading Dune right now, and obviously in terms of like world building and stuff, it loses. But just in general, the combination of all of these classic elements that's executed so well in this modern, fast-paced, lovely, romantic style, balancing every element of what a good sci-fi should have, romance, cool tech, laser fights and space fight scenes, character development, with six different characters, no less. It's amazing. As both as a writer as a reader, I respect this person. How I don't know how they managed this. Probably took them twenty years to write. I have one main character in the book that I'm writing. This person pretty much has sex. It's amazing. It's so 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 awesome. I'll stop ranting now. That's about all I have to say about the book. That's the general summary and my general perception of the book. Why it's good. The bad, and uh, maybe because it's so genius that some of the lower IQ people, I'm just kidding, some less English endowed people would find it hard to understand considering the really fast pacing, the multitude of characters, the complicated plot, and just the complexity of the writing. But I don't care about that. It's, it's just awesome. It's great. I mean, I, I'm, I don't consider myself like a master reader or anything. But I've read my fair share of fantasy and sci-fi books. I'm obviously not only limited to what I have behind me. And I, I, I hope at the very least that I can keep up with more complicated plots like this. But even I was like, like on my toes, you know, I was, I was up at like 100%. My brain was whirring trying to figure this out. It was, it was such just an exhilarating read. It's like a roller coaster ride. I literally had to forcefully stop myself from reading book three because I don't want to know the contents of book three before making this review because that would confuse things because to me it's just one story so I might confuse when book two ends and when book three starts and that would be a big mess so I had to forcefully stop myself from reading book three and I will go do that like right after this probably tomorrow actually and that's pretty much it. And like always, your pot quester and the pot quester, it is just so, 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 so good. And have a great day. I would highly recommend to any sci-fi geek, even a fantasy geek would love this. Just the story's awesome, character's awesome, everything you need in a good book is here. It's a prime example. It's just, 
It's just a role model, man. It's a role model for all books. All YA books. Have a great day, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you.